welcome to Michelle's Learning Meal, where bite-sized lessons and insights are served. Welcome back to your channel, 21st Century Learners. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Today, I'm going to discuss with you the various communication models. I assume that you already have watched the previous videos, especially on the nature and process of communication. In that video, we took up the nine elements of communication. Let's review them. The nine elements are the sender, encoding, message, channel, decoding, receiver, feedback, barrier, and context. We will be needing this information to connect to the next lesson because we will see in the different communication models the interplay of these nine elements of communication. Having provided you with that backgrounder, we're now ready to jump into the lesson. But remember your target. You should be able to explain the various models of communication. Now let's dish out the different various communication models. Our first stop, the linear model. There are two models under this category, popularized by two different authors. The first author is by Laswell of 1948. The information in this communication process sequentially flows. It is a one-way communication process in which the communicator or the interlocutor is an active participant. The receiver, however, processes the information, but he or she does not reciprocate the message. To provide you with some examples, the information that we get from radio and TV broadcasting, also the information derived from books, magazines, newspapers, and even digitized materials are examples of Laswell model of 1940. The second category under linear model is popularized by Shannon and Weaver of 1949. Both of these authors are employees of Bell Telephone Laboratory, which is why the model chart resembles the transmission of a telephone message. The information source and the destination represent humans, while the transmitter and the receiver stand for devices and instruments with signals ranging from electronic signals to radio waves to gestures. The highlight of this model introduces the idea of noise or barrier which hinders the transmission of the message. In other words, the first and the second model are much like the same except for the idea that blocks the transmission of the message. Examples under Laswell's model are also the same illustrations under Shannon and Weaver model, but just to highlight the noise or the barrier. Consider this example. Suppose you are in an auditorium and you're listening to a speaker. Then you suddenly felt a grumbling in your stomach because it's already 12 o'clock or it's lunchtime. This will create a hindrance to understanding the message. The second communication model is called interactive. This is authored by Charm of 1954. While the linear model regard communication as a one-way process, the interactive model consider communication as a dynamics of exchange, meaning the communicator and the recipient take turn in speaking and listening to each other. The key element of Charm interactive model is feedback. That's why it's called interactive process. Examples to these are telephone conversation, oral conversation, sending SMS or email messages, and even the use of sign languages. The fourth model is called Transactional Model by Wood of 2009. This model presents an even more realistic view 
of a communicative process, a spontaneous and rapid flow of ideas. It takes into account the personal and professional background of the participants, including their experiences, their cultural beliefs, their self-esteem, and other factors that occur within them and their environment. An example to this is a teacher and student relation. If the teacher is good at communicating, the students will be able to grasp the ideas or the message being conveyed. And over time, there will be more improvements of their communication. Another example for the transactional model is the employee-employer relation. Suppose a manager is not very good at communicating or putting across his message. The employees will not be able to grasp fully or to understand the message. But because the communication process occurs over time, then there is a room for improvement for the second time, the third time, and so on. The fifth model of communication is called the gatekeeper model. The gatekeeper model represents mass media. That is how the audience on a local, national, or international scale receive information from media. Media that is in the form of newspapers, TV, radio, or even internet. So the key players of mass media have the access to information and more importantly, have the control over what is disseminated to the public. So the mass media here takes the role of the gatekeeper. That is, they have the uh, ability to control what information will the public know but not necessarily how the public will interpret the information. So wrapping up our discussion for this session are the different communication models. And these are the linear model, interactive model, transactional model, and the gatekeeper model. So ladies and gentlemen, if you have questions, suggestions, please let me know in the comment box down below. Till next time, bye!